Hey, it's Dino, and let's talk about cores, cross-origin resource sharing. Um, that is a mechanism that is uh, defined on the web that allows user agents, browsers, to communicate with server endpoints um, to send, uh, to, to exchange information, primarily via HTTP headers, about what requests the server wants the user agent to allow. Okay, uh, so browsers send requests to servers and say, am I allowed to make this request or not? And the servers can send back responses saying, yep, that's uh, that's a thing that you're allowed to do. There are a couple of different ways to do this. Um, you know, for, uh, and by the way, this is only for cross origin requests. For same origin requests, those are always allowed. And what do we mean by same origin requests? Mostly we're talking about, um, uh, for our purposes, let's, we're talking about JavaScript code or, or other code that runs inside the, the browser and is loaded from a web page. So a modern web app, you uh, visit an address with your browser, it downloads some markup, HTML, and some JavaScript and some CSS, and it starts to execute that JavaScript. Um, by default, the user agent, the browser itself, is going to allow requests uh, that originate from within the JavaScript back to the same origin, back to the same site that uh, delivered the, the web page and the JavaScript itself. However, there are some cases where you want cross-origin requests to happen. That's when the JavaScript requests something that's not from the same server that delivered the, um, the web content. Uh, cores is designed to enable uh, an allowance model for that. Now, Cores defines something called simple requests. Um, they use uh, either get, head, or post. They have only the, these headers and no more. If there is a content type header, that is to say if there's a post, uh, it'll have a content type header and it'll have only one of these three values. So you'll see you can't post um, XML, you can't post JSON, uh, it can only, um, a simple request under the definitions of cores uh, can only carry these uh, content types. If the request is simple, then um, the, uh, the browser will send the request and then uh, check the responses and uh, interpret whether that, um, that response includes uh, a header that allows the the request um, for that origin and so on. Uh, and if that's the case, then the browser will kind of bubble up the response into the JavaScript code, the application code. Then there's a separate class, separate class of requests that require what's called a course preflight, which is really an options request. So if you look at this code here, uh, we've got JavaScript, uh, some example JavaScript code that's calling into um, a domain across, it's a cross domain request. Um, this actually um, is not sent directly. What would happen is the uh, the browser, before sending a post to this address, would first send an options uh, to the the address, indicating that um, that the application code running in the browser wants to run wants to send in a post and it wants to include some headers. And only when um, the server responds with access control, uh, the appropriate access control headers that say, you know, this origin is allowed, this method is allowed, these headers are allowed, only in that case will the, the browser, the user agent, permit the post that's actually encoded in JavaScript code to happen. It will only um, send that later. So really there are two requests. There's the preflight and then there's the actual request. Um, so that's kind of how cores works. Uh, if you uh, have an API that is managed in Apigee, there are ways to, to configure it to um, return the correct cores headers. Um, and we've got some example, you know, if you search for that on the web, there's some example documentation that describes that. But basically the idea is you're going to use an assign message policy and set the access control headers um, according to your requirements. And that could be allow origin, allow headers. Um, the, um, the max age is just a, a way to tell the browser how long to cache these responses, allow methods, and so on. 
um, you'd have to attach that assigned message policy somewhere in the proxy, probably in the um, in a preflow, um, and also in a um, in a special conditional flow that handles the options preflight uh, request. So uh, you know, there's so there's a bunch of you know documentation you sort of have to follow along. Uh, to to get this um, get the proxy to behave properly with with cores, uh, and that ends up being kind of um, oh just kind of extra work. What we've done now though is introduced a new policy that makes that simpler. And today I want to show you the policy and kind of walk through how it behaves and uh, what it does for you. So to that end, I produced. A, an example API proxy, we're calling it cores. I'm calling it cores demo. This is the cores policy. Let's have a look at it, uh, aptly named cores. And in there, you can configure um, all the um, uh, uh, elements that you want to allow for uh, a cores accessible API. Remember, this is only necessary if your API is going to be invoked from a uh, web browser directly. Um, so I can set up the origins, the methods, the headers, um, uh, the maximum age, again, the caching uh, period for these things, whether a credential should be allowed, like an authorization header, uh, whether to handle the pre-flight pre response. And the nice thing is I don't have to sort of scatter this logic all throughout my um, API proxy. I just need to attach that policy once in the pre-flow. Uh, I don't, you see, there's no condition on options. There's nothing that I need to do. Um, and Apogee will just do the right thing when an options preflight request uh, arrives at the proxy, and otherwise it'll send back the, the appropriate headers um, for normal responses as well. One thing I want to point out, each of these uh, configuration elements is um, an, a message template. So if you wanted to, you could have these things be dynamically determined, you know, the, the response and the course. Um, responses, the headers can be dynamically determined based on um, variables that are set in the in the course of uh, execution of the proxy. So for this one, I I have it set up to allow get, post, and delete. Uh, you'll note no put there; that's disallowed. And also, it allows um, these headers outside of those safe headers that I that I showed before. Uh, notably, there's x requested with and no other headers. Um, so that's what this cores policy does in the in this proxy. Uh, let's actually have a look at this um, running uh, in a in a real example. Okay, what we have here on the left hand side is a web app that I'll use to test the cores capability. Basically, it's a it's a simple form. I can fill out a few things, um, select the verb, specify some additional headers. And then with this button, it'll run some JavaScript code, which looks like this. It's really just jQuery um, that collects the items from the web form, the verb, the headers, um, any payload, and so on. And then uses the jQuery AJAX function to send a request to the designated URL. When the JavaScript receives the response, it'll show that uh, the results of the response in the web page itself, whether that re um, request succeeds or or fails. So pretty simple JavaScript, just for the purposes of demonstration. Um, and let's just uh, try this out. So I'll send a request, and because it's a get, and there's no additional headers, that's a simple request. And so there's no course preflight. The request does go out, and it is allowed by the um, by the browser, by the user agent, because those cores headers are, are present there. If I send something a little bit different, like x requested with, this is one of those headers that, um, that I added to the cores policy that I showed you a little bit earlier uh, as allowed. But because this is off the safe headers list, it will require a preflight. And we saw that here when I sent it, there are two requests that got sent out. The preflight, which is an options request generated not by JavaScript, but by the browser itself. 
uh, telling the endpoint, hey, I want to send you a get and I want to send it with um, this particular header. Is that okay? And in response, um, the browser received the course headers that said, yep, you can send these methods and these headers will allow that. Uh, so the browser allowed that second request, which is really a get, uh, sending that, that um, X requested with header. We can see both of these requests. This is the first one that was a simple request. It just came in. Um, we didn't have the header on it, uh, the X requested with header. So that was just allowed to proceed. This one is the options request. This is the pre-flight. And there's no logic in the API proxy to handle the options call. That's being handled automatically by the cores policy. Uh, and then this is the actual get that was sent by that, that web app. Uh, and we get the, the response back. What happens if we try something a little bit different? Let's maybe uh, remove the header and we'll go to a post. And now I'm posting, let's call it text plane. It doesn't matter what I post, just any body. Um, what do we see there? Uh, let me clear this so it's so it's clearer for you. Um, when I send a request, it's a simple request because we have content type of text plane, which is allowed. It is a post, uh, and there are no uh, headers off the safe list. So that's a simple request. No pre-flight is required, but even so, um, the user agent requires that these headers be present to allow the application code to see the, the result that comes back. Uh, if I change this just by including the application JSON content type header and send that, in that case, a pre-flight is sent. Um, the response comes back, it's okay. Uh, we're gonna allow the content type header with um, application JSON. And so the post uh, actually gets sent by the application code. Now, if I change this to, um, let's say, a different header, this is not on the um, um, the allowed list in that course policy, and I send that, uh, let's have a look at what that will do. That will send the course pre-flight, and again, we can see that, that's the options call. The response is a 403, that's not really the important thing for the browser's purpose, purposes. The key thing is the response headers do not have the allow um, origin header, the cores header that is required by the user agent. And you can see that error message down here in the console and the developer tools. It's saying, hey, the, the post has been disallowed because the options call um, didn't have the appropriate header in it. So this is the post re uh, request that the application code tried to make, but never actually made it. So no communication went to the, to the endpoint. Um, so that's because I had this different header in there. If I uh, try again and remove the header, then that's going to work because um, the course policy allows that header. Uh, one more thing I'll show you is a put. Now, if you remember in that course policy, that did not allow the put verb. So uh, even though it's the same payload, same content type, it's a different verb, and that's disallowed by the course response. Um, by the pre-flight, and so that also is disallowed in the same way by the user agent um, because of the, the response from the pre-flight does not include uh, an explicit allowance for that verb. Um, if I just change that to, um, to post, uh, that, that's going to succeed again. And we can see the results of all this in the, um, in the trace. These are the, the requests that are uh, being rejected because, you know, that's the wrong, um, in this case, the uh, access, con the uh, request was for uh, different header, you know, passing in different header, and the course policy said, yeah, we're not going to allow that. That's, um, we're not going to send back the appropriate headers. So that illustrates the, the new course policy in uh, Apigee. It's available for Apigee X and Apigee Hybrid. Um, that should make your lives simpler when exposing APIs to browser-based applications. Hope this has been helpful. Let me know if you got any questions. Take care.